I want you to notice, I want you to notice, if you've got these asymptotes, right? You've got these asymptotes. So here's my hyperbola review. Okay. That's occupied. It's not quite clear yet, but you get the idea. Okay. If you change the A and the B, right? Remember what they're changing is proportions. Yeah? So they're stretching or squashing or stretching or squashing. Okay? But all they're gonna do is give us fatter or thinner or bigger versions of this. Okay? There's no way you can start from that form and get to a graph like this. Why is that? Algebraically, why is it impossible? Because you can't, number one, well, we've got like, we've got asymptotes there, so I can't like sort of cross over there. But more importantly, because keeping my measure of oblique asymptotes, I actually can cross oblique asymptotes. More of the issue is, like, how did you get these things? Oh, uh, so what? Um, Do you remember those? We found for this, you can't possibly get real values that can satisfy that. You can't, right? So this is a hyperbola that is oriented horizontally, okay? In order to get um, a hyperbola that's oriented vertically, you notice how there are no x-intercepts on this new green one, right? So what's going to happen is, these two guys are going to switch around. They're going to switch around, okay? So it's going to look like this. I need a new, new board. Uh, I'm going to have y squared. Okay. Now this guy is important. This guy's very important. Um, I'm going to give him a name in a second, but I just want to do a tiny little bit of algebra to show what's going to happen with him. Okay. Uh, do you notice if I try and work with this and start doing all of this? Let's just think about the asymptotes as an example. Okay. What happens when I start to calculate them? Well, I still want to get y squared as the subject, and then y, and then do all this limiting stuff. Right. Watch what happens on the next line. Watch. I'm going to get rid of the x squared term over here, and it just turns into this, right? Now look carefully. Compare it to what I just did. Do you notice? What did I just do? Everything looks the same, Minus plus. except that's a plus. Do you agree? Right? Like that's going to be a plus. So that means that's going to be a plus, and that, and that. So now what happens when I take the limit? And the answer is that thing is still approaching zero. So therefore, as x approaches infinity, y is still going to approach that. This hyperbola has exactly the same asymptotes as this <coughs> hyperbola. Okay? So you're getting this kind of configuration where they're approaching the same thing, but you're just oriented differently. Okay? So to borrow a word that we introduced, uh, introduced last lesson, which kind of just means, well, it's like a hyperbola, but it's the other one. We call this, we call this the conjugate hyperbola. The conjugate hyperbola. It's the hyperbola that shares the same asymptotes as whichever other hyperbola you're looking at. But instead of being oriented this way, it's going to be oriented the other way. It's going to hit the other coordinate axis. OK, now, one last thing before we leave all of this stuff, and particularly figure out these asymptotes and why they're useful. Okay? Do you notice there's a special case for the asymptotes? If these two numbers, a and b, if they are equal to each other, Right? They're not just off at random angles. If A equals B, right, the linear behavior is a very special case uh, of one. When A equals B, that fraction, B over A, is just one. So what you get is this. Okay? So these two asymptotes here are going to be at right angles. Right? Do you see that? Like one's plus x and one's minus x. Now, being that they are at right angles, the hyperbola, the specific kind of hyperbola you get from this, we call it the rectangular hyperbola. Now, you might say, what? Where are the rectangles in there? And the answer is, remember what I just told you about the asymptotes? They're at right angles. In fact, that's exactly what rectangle means. Like, you, we're so familiar with rectangles being a shape that has four right angles in it. But actually, rectangle just means right angle. Um, so for example, when you, when you rectify something, it's like something's wrong, and you rectify it. You make it right. right. Okay? Oh, so a rectangle is literally a right angle. So really, really this shape, really this shape, <laughs> 
This should be called a quad rectangle, but I guess that's a bit, because you know, it's got four of them, right? But I guess that's a bit awkward, and um, so it's now called a rectangle. Wait, is a square also a quad rectangle? Uh, well, yeah, because it's got four sides, but it just happens to be that all those sides are equal. Okay. So when we say the rectangular hyperbola, we are looking at it when the asymptotes are at rectangles, okay? They're at right angles to each other. Now, by the way, this is not the only rectangular hyperbola. In fact, the, all of the hyperbola you've been dealing with for a very long time have been rectangular hyperbola. What was the first hyperbola you ever met? It was one on x, right? One on x? Hold on a second. One on x. Think about one on x for a second. We know exactly what it looks like. Here's the first quadrant. Here's the third. But where are the asymptotes? And the answer is, they're already there, right? There they are, the coordinate axes, and they are at right angles, right? Um, almost every other one you've also drawn has been like this too. Like if I do something like, okay, y equals um, 2 on 3 minus x plus 1. Just think about what you know about this thing, okay? Um, I'll do the super quick version. I won't bother very much with the scale. Where's the, um, where's the easiest asymptote to identify? I say x equals 3, right? You're going to get something there. x equals 3, so I'll just put that there. Okay. And then, because this whole thing as x approaches infinity is going to go up to 0, you're going to approach y equals 1. Right? You need to be up here. Right? Now, I think I've done a number on myself, and I think this is going to be oriented backwards because it's got a minus sign. But you can see the important thing is the asymptotes are at right angles. It's another rectangular hyperbola. It's just well, number one, it's obviously it's, it's been moved away from the origin. But number two, it's been rotated. Okay? In fact, these hyperbolas that we're more familiar with are these guys at 45 degrees. Okay? And that's why they have quite different equations than the rectangular hyperbola we've been getting so far. Okay. Alright, so um, in conclusion, what have we looked at so far? What have we established? Okay? You know how to work with ellipses and find their features. Okay? The reason why hyperbola come later is because even though a lot of it is the same, a lot of it's the same, there are more features and they're a little bit trickier to work out. Not only are there more features, there are sort of different categories of hyperbola that you need to keep in your mind as well because they relate to each other in important ways. Uh, and lastly, the thing that we just looked at was that in an ellipse, in an ellipse, if A and B are equal, what shape do you get? You get a circle, right? If A and B are equal in a hyperbola, we get this guy, right? Uh, all the proportions are kind of nice and equal, uh, and that's why you've got those asymptotes of right angles. And if you like switch the rectangular hyperbola to the circle, you switch the concavity. Yeah, kinda, kinda. If you think about it this way, um, a circle and an ellipse, they're kind of it's the part of the cone that's facing inwards, and then if you cut it in that right direction, you get the part that's facing outwards. Right? So that's why it's quite amazing. Go have a look at um, the thing that you should look up if you are really curious. And I think you know who you are if that's you. Um, go and look up these things. Um, not dandelion. <laughs> I didn't misspell it. Uh, dandelion spheres are the geometric construction involved in proving that all of these 2D shapes come from this 3D thing. It's quite profound, it's pretty heavy duty maths, but it's really interesting.